This was a very difficult question in the exam when it was asked. Uh, and according to the examiner's report, 16.6% of students were able to score full marks. So I believe there are seven marks in total for this question. But 20% of students who took the exam scored zero marks for this question. The key to a question like this is to be able to pick up little marks here and there as the question goes on. So even if you can't score all of the marks available, you can still score a fair few marks by working out small steps along the way. The first step is to rewrite the question into the form of quasi-balanced equations. Okay, so I've read the question and I've written three quasi-equations for what's taking place. So in the first step, we've got hydrated sodium carbonate and we've reacted it with hydrochloric acid. And you should know from GCSE that the products are sodium chloride, carbon dioxide and water. And we can quite easily balance this equation. I don't want you to worry too much about the um, X plus one H2O here. Uh, that really doesn't matter and it doesn't change the calculation. The only part that you need to get right is that one mole of hydrated sodium carbonate reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so, so long as you have that ratio correct, these products don't really matter. So this experiment is something that we call a back titration. So in this experiment, we've used excess hydrochloric acid. And that means that we've got a little bit of leftover hydrochloric acid at the end. Now in the question, a sample of the hydrochloric acid that's left over is taken. And that sample is reacted with sodium hydroxide in a titration. So the next step of a calculation like this is to go through the question carefully, line by line, adding numbers to our balanced equations. Okay, so now I've been through the question and I've added the numbers to the calculation. So we've got 627 milligrams of hydrated sodium carbonate. Uh, we've got 200 cubic centimetres of 0.25 moles per cubic decimetre hydrochloric acid. Uh, we've got the leftover hydrochloric acid here, and that's been made up to 250 cubic centimetres. Okay, so that chemical there is the same as that chemical over here. We then take a sample of this 250 cubic centimetre hydrochloric acid. And this point here is a key point in the examiner's report that students forgot to do. Okay, so a lot of students were able to get the calculation correct, but they forgot about this taking a sample part. So that's quite an important part just to look out for in a question. Then this 25 cubic centimetre sample, so here it is again here, these two chemicals are the same, was reacted with sodium hydroxide. And they've given us the concentration and the volume of the sodium hydroxide. So the first step was to rewrite the question in the form of balanced equations, which we've done. The second step is to add the numbers from the question, which we've also done. The third step, and these types of calculations are quite routine, the third step is to work out the number of moles of something. Because if you work out the number of moles, we can use our balanced equations to work out the number of moles of everything else in this scheme. So normally, what you would look for is a chemical somewhere, normally something near the bottom, that has two numbers associated with it. So straight away, we can see that we can work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. And we do that by taking the concentration and multiplying by the volume. Okay, remembering to turn that volume into cubic decimeters by dividing by 1000.
Okay, so when we do that calculation, we get 3.99 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So in chemistry, normally just round your answer to three significant figures, unless the question specifies otherwise. So the point here is that if we know the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, we can now work out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. And if we know the number of moles of hydrochloric acid here, well, we know that it's just the same chemical. Okay, so we can work out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid in the previous part here. In this step, uh, we took a sample, uh, and you can see that the sample was one tenth of the original. So we've removed 25 cubic centimetres from a 250 cubic centimetre volumetric flask, uh, and we would have done that using a pipette. So all we do is we take this number of moles and multiply it by 10 to get the number of moles in the original 250 cubic centimetre sample. So as we said, this chemical here, the hydrochloric acid, is the same as this chemical here, the leftover hydrochloric acid from step one. So the number of moles must be the same. Okay, so we're now getting towards the final part of the calculation. So we used this amount of hydrochloric acid initially and this amount of hydrochloric acid was left over. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid we used initially. And again, to do that, I'm just going to take the concentration and multiply by the volume in cubic decimeters. So we had 0 0.05 moles of hydrochloric acid initially, and we were left with 3.99 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of hydrochloric acid. So if I subtract this number from this number, we can work out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that actually reacted. Okay, so if I just draw a line here and a line here. Okay, so 0 0.0101 moles of hydrochloric acid actually reacted in this experiment. Now we can see from our balanced equation that for every one mole of hydrated sodium carbonate, two moles of hydrochloric acid reacted. So if we take this number and divide by two, we can work out the number of moles of hydrated sodium carbonate that reacted in this experiment.
Okay, so we've worked out that 5.05 .05 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of, hi of uh, hydrated sodium carbonate uh, reacted in this experiment. Now you can see that we've got the moles and we've got the mass. And so you can see that mass and moles, we can now work out the MR of the hydrated sodium carbonate. So just as a reminder from GCSE, if you know the mass of something and the number of moles of something, you can work out the MR of something. Okay. Now, you're probably quite used to uh, you know, putting your finger over the mass uh, and multiplying moles times MR to calculate a mass. You're probably also used to putting your finger over the moles and dividing mass by MR. It's quite uncommon to be able to work out an MR, but we can do in this situation. So you just put your finger over MR and it's mass divided by moles. Okay, so notice the mass, I've converted that to grams, okay, and I've done that by dividing it by 1,000. So in the examiner's report, most students were able to make that conversion. Uh, and I've divided by the number of moles that I've worked out here. Uh, and I've got a number, 124. Okay, and I've just used three significant figures for that number. Okay. So at this stage, we can actually compare the value of MR here to the value of MR that we expect for this chemical, hydrated sodium carbonate. So we know, so if you look at the periodic table, uh, the relative atomic masses, sodium has a relative atomic mass of around 23. Okay, and we've got two of them. Carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12, Oxygen is 16, hydrogen is 1, and oxygen is 16. Okay, so we can rewrite this in an algebraic form. So 2 times 23, so that's for the sodium, plus 12, that's for the carbon. 3 times 16, that's for the three oxygens. And x times 18, so uh, 18, well that's just 16 plus 2 hydrogens. And all we need to do now is solve this equation for x, and then we've answered the question. And so if we rearrange this equation, so I've got 124, if I take away 2 times 23, take away 12, take away 3 lots of 16, divided by 18, we get the number 1. So x is equal to 1, and that is the final answer for this calculation. You can normally tell if you've got the right answer if you get a nice whole number at the end of the calculation. So if I'd got something like 1.5 I know that I would need to go back and check my calculation. But the fact that I've got a nice whole number 
a nice round number, that's good evidence that I've got the question right and I don't need to come back and check my answer.